In this video, we look at Ubuntu 21.10's new features and key changes to help you decide if it's worth installing or upgrading to, and uh, spoiler alert, it is. Ubuntu 21.10 comes with nine months of support. It doesn't sound like a lot, but remember, you'll be able to upgrade to Ubuntu 22.04 next April, and that's supported for at least five years. The desktop may look familiar, but this release uses GNOME 40 by default, which introduces a horizontal workspace switcher and a revamped app launcher. It took me no time at all to get used to the horizontal workspace switcher, and you can drag and drop windows between desktops directly, or by using the tiny thumbnails stripped across the top. New multi-touch gestures are enabled on Wayland for entering the workspace switcher, opening the app launcher, scrolling from side to side, and then exiting. Gestures are all one-to-one, -one, meaning they move as fast or as slow as your fingers do. Ubuntu integrates GNOME 40 overall pretty well, considering that the vanilla version is designed around a dock that sits off the screen and at the bottom of the display. While I think Upstream's intended layout is better balanced overall, Ubuntu Spin is still fully functional, and you can always move the dock to the bottom of the display yourself. Talking of the Ubuntu dock, there are a couple of minor tweaks here. Running apps are now separated from your pinned apps by a divider, and the trash can has moved off the desktop and onto the dock itself. You may have noticed that this version of Ubuntu uses a light theme by default for apps, menus, and dialogues. However, the core GNOME Shell UI is still dark, and if you want a fuller dark experience, you can dive into the Settings app to enable it. Firefox is now included as a Snap App by default on all new installs of Ubuntu 21.10. Now, Snap Apps get a bad rep due to their slow startup times from cold, though they do get faster on subsequent launches. Though controversial to some, this change is likely going to go unnoticed by the majority, especially as promised speed boosts and feature fixes roll out in the coming months. The Wi-Fi panel now puts previously connected wireless networks at the top of the connections list. You can assign a custom compose key for entering advanced characters. And the about page now shows more details like your OEM and model number, though annoyingly still not your kernel version. Ubuntu's file manager can now sort items by creation date. File transfer and progress dialogues are said to be more accurate. Tab autocomplete is enabled in the location bar. And you can unpack password protected zip files in Nautilus directly. Among Impish's itinerary of app updates is LibreOffice 7.2. This includes a new HUD-style command search menu, faster startup times, and better Microsoft Office compatibility. Thunderbird 91 is present with a hugely improved email account creation wizard and support for multi-process plugins. Ubuntu's default calendar app can, at long last, open and import events from ICS files. A ton of additional software is available in the Ubuntu software app, including big hitters like Spotify, Discord, and Visual Studio Code. Also worth checking out GNOME 40's core apps, like the redesigned weather tool, the improved maps client, and the increasingly capable open source web browser, Epiphany. System requirements have not changed, so if your device can run other versions of Ubuntu, it can also run this one. Indeed, performance is likely to have improved thanks to a combo of kernel driver and code base upgrades. In addition, users with NVIDIA graphics can now run Ubuntu on Wayland. Work on a new Ubuntu installer made using Google's Flutter took place this cycle, though it isn't yet complete enough to ship by default. Something to look out for next time. So that's it for Ubuntu 21.10, impish by name, but overall pretty interesting by nature. There's a bright new theme, a refined user experience, a slew of updated apps, and yes, a controversial browser change that not everyone's going to like. But in all, the impish injury is a sure foot forward on the road to next year's all-important LTS release. We have got a ton of great video content on the way, so be sure to hit the subscribe button below so that you don't miss out on any of it.